Hi guys, I'm Phil Snow, the fat loss and performance coach. Kapow! Today's video is about self-control and how we can use and utilize self-control to obviously help us achieve our fat loss goals, but also any other goals that we might also have out there. Okay, so talking fat loss then, we set these amazing goals where we're gonna, I don't know, drop 10 kilos of body fat in 12 weeks. We're gonna go to the gym five days a week. We're gonna eat celery and carrot sticks three times a day so we're going to drop uh, our, our body fat quick as that okay that's great all right we'll set those manageable goals but all of a sudden we end up tripping up a little bit okay temptation rears its ugly head someone invites us for a night out uh, and we fancy a couple of glasses of wine and we can't resist someone brings in some cake uh, because it's someone's birthday in the office so you get offered some cake and you can't resist and then someone, you walk past Greg's or something and you smell the cakes and the sausage rolls and you just can't resist, okay? Temptation is everywhere, it's against us. So what can we do to kind of combat that? Well, we've just got to think slightly differently. Now, if we was to have that, say, slice of cake, yes, that's gonna bring us happiness and fulfillment. Of course it will, okay? It's a short-term happiness. Whereas if we're uh, striving towards that 10 kilo uh, fat reduction and looking great on the beach and increasing our confidence and feeling proud as punch, then that's also gonna ultimately make us happy, okay? So we have two different scales of happiness. So we have the smaller, sooner happiness, okay? But uh, we also have our larger, later happiness, okay? Which one do you think is gonna make us feel better ultimately? So what we tend to see is with the smaller, sooner uh, strategy, okay, we see self-control failure. With the larger later, yeah, obviously we have self-control success. So, how can we build our self-control? Okay, well, there's a few ways we can do that. One, we can make a plan, a plan of action. Right, okay, when this happens, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, okay? Uh, also, uh, I've done videos on intentional implementation, okay? Uh, you can check those out. So, if I'm about to do uh, Y, then I need to make sure that I do X to make sure I combat Y, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Next thing I can do is avoid, okay? So I said I get pulled into Greg's every time I walk past it. I love the sausage rolls, I love the donuts. Then guess what? Instead of walking past Greg's every day, I'm gonna take a different route. So I'm using the avoidance approach to help me out there and help resist temptation. Then another thing I can do then is to rethink temptation. So if, uh, if you imagine like a nice warm cookie, uh, the smell of freshly baked dough and the chocolate chip taste on the mouth and it's so sweet and great, mm, love it. But if I was to change the perception of that, i.e., okay, let's make that image that I have in my head more black and white, if I make it more fuzzy, if I get rid of the smell and I change the taste to, I don't know, uh, something I don't particularly like, like celery actually, then actually that doesn't seem as appealing to me now. I don't really crave those cookies that I was earlier, okay? So I'm rethinking the temptation, okay? Another thing I can do then, okay, is build muscle, okay? I'm not just talking about these muscles, okay? I'm talking about self-control muscles. If we start resisting temptation on a smaller scale, then step by step, we're building or rebuilding our self-control muscle, all right? Which means that we're gonna be able to resist bigger things later down the line because we started on a smaller scale and a smaller approach. Guys, that's a little brief touch on self-control. Hope that's helped. Keep it real, speak to you soon.